For someone who just had a heart attack last week, Bernie Sanders looks absolutely incredible. In fact, he looks radiant. Like, he looks like he's doing really well. So if you were worried about his health, just seeing him in action, I mean, that should assure you that he's going to be okay. And when I first saw him, you know, do post-heart attack interviews, I could see that he looked great. However, if you are a CNN graphics editor, then you don't necessarily want to make Bernie Sanders look good, so maybe you go out of your way to make him look worse, maybe you photoshop blemishes on his face and uh, red spots, or maybe you up the saturation and literally change the color hue of your video to make him look more red than he is in actuality because it kind of seems like that's what CNN did. And as someone who edits videos on a daily basis, I'll tell you that we are constantly trying to adjust the contrast, adjust the hue, to make the videos appear more natural and to make them more crisp, make the colors pop more, right? Um, so you're not going to put out a video without adjusting these things if you're a professional. I mean, amateurs, sure. But for a multi-billion dollar company like CNN to put out you know, a video where Bernie Sanders almost looks purple, that is incredibly embarrassing. Now, I have no evidence that CNN did this intentionally, but, you know, if they didn't do this intentionally, then they should still be embarrassed because to have a candidate look like he's purple, like an alien, I mean, if my camera was producing these types of colors, I would definitely want to adjust that so it looks more natural, especially if you use it all the time. I mean, every other news broadcast, AP for example, the colors looked fine because if you are a professional, if you're in this field, then why wouldn't you want things to look good? So, you know, it just looks really suspect. Like, I don't have evidence to confirm that this is what CNN in fact did. They haven't responded to accusations that they adjusted the color. But, um, you know, to do this in an insidious way to maybe prime your viewers to think that he's more sick than he is, there's something really like gross about that. And look, I'll be perfectly honest, when I am adjusting thumbnails with Donald Trump's image, you know, maybe I'll go a little overboard on the saturation to make him look a little bit more orange than he is in reality. Um, but that's just me being a dick. Like if I am talking about someone's health, I'm not going to go out of my way to disingenuously make them look more sick because there's something just really gross about that, right? Making fun of someone and making them orange is one thing, but we're talking about Bernie Sanders and his health. People are going to be looking at him. They're going to have him under a microscope. You know, they're going to looking at be looking at his skin tone, his color, the way he talks. And, you know, CNN probably was cognizant of this fact, and maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Either way, this is either amateur or them going out of their way to make him look bad intentionally. And um, either way, it's not good for CNN. Now, on top of that weird little controversy, uh, there's also been some talk of Bernie Sanders potentially winding down the campaign altogether. So he said something to the effect of, I'll be doing less campaign events, and now there are reports of him scaling back the campaign. And look, here's the thing about that. Bernie Sanders is not scaling back the campaign insofar as, you know, he's winding it down, he's going to be exiting soon. What he meant when he said that and why, you know, CNN omits the context here is frustrating, um, but we know why they're doing it. What he meant was, look, I'm just going to campaign as much as other candidates, not more. Because if you're doing four rallies per day, you are doing probably double than other candidates. So by just running a campaign that is comparable, you know, that puts you at parity with your opponents, that makes sense. But they're trying to make it seem as if, oh, he's sick, he's exiting. Um, so in an interview with CNN, he kind of cleared up all of the confusion. And I want to play what he had to say. He also kind of talked about the heart attack. And, um, you know, I, I think this is important. So uh, here is Bernie Sanders talking to CNN. I want to clarify something. You said that you misspoke yesterday when talking about changing the nature of your campaign dialing it back, not doing four rallies a day anymore. What, what, what did you mean? Did you misspeak or are you going to dial it back? Well, what I mean is probably next week I'm not going to do four rallies a day. Okay. I, I think I've done more rallies than any other candidate who's currently running for president of the United States. But I'm feeling great and we're going to run a vigorous campaign. Uh, we're working on our schedule right now, which is going to take us uh, to Iowa, uh, to uh, Nevada. Uh, probably back to New Hampshire. We're ready to go full blast. You, you, you had had a doctor's appointment, uh, I believe, this week, and a follow-up appointment now right. back here in, in Vermont. What do they What do they tell you? Well, the reason we, I have been blessed with such good health throughout my entire life, to be honest with you, I've never gone to a cardiologist. Uh, I, I don't think you know before uh, this event. 
uh, and I didn't have one here in, in Burlington. So we found a very good cardiologist. Uh, they did a, uh, a, a uh, you know, they, they looked at my heart. Uh, and what he says, the recovery is going very, very well. And we look forward to a full recovery. The, the, the uh, echocardiogram was what they echocardiogram. did. Echocardiogram. Yeah. That, which is an important test. An echocardiogram tells the function of the heart, how well the heart right. is beating, and can also give some indication of how severe the heart attack right. was. Right. What did they tell you? Well, what they told me is that, uh, that we are on the road to a full recovery. There was some damage, but what happens is, as it, within the next month, we'll see what happens. Uh, but so far, so very good. There's a, there's a video of you actually swinging a baseball. That was this mo swinging a bat. Uh, trying to keep up with my grandchildren. Keep... That is very exhausting, I must tell you. I, I, it's almost a silly question to ask how you're feeling because you, you, you said that you, f you feel Sanjay, great. Sanjay, the God's truth is that if you, you sitting there and you said, Bernie, did you have a heart attack last week? I'd say, what are you talking about? I feel great. Uh, I, not an ounce of pain. You know, I've been walking around a whole lot, playing ball with the kids. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel very good and I'm confident that we're going to be uh, running a very, very vigorous uh, campaign. But what I would say, and I, I don't know if you wanted to talk about this, is what I do kick myself a little bit about, and I hope people understand this and hear this, is that I should have paid more attention to some of the symptoms that were occurring. You know, when you do four rallies a day and you run all over the country, you get tired. Everybody yeah. would get tired. But I was more tired than I usually uh, have been. Uh, had more trouble sleeping than ordinarily. Uh, occasionally I'd be up there uh, at the podium and I'd be a little bit unsteady. Uh, and you know, one time I was just lifting, literally holding the mic up to my arm and my arm hurt, right. my, up to my mouth and my arm hurt. And, and I should have paid more attention to those symptoms. So I hope that people learn from my mistake. I mean, it's such an important point. The symptoms that you're describing may not be classic sort of symptoms, but left arm pain, some of this stuff uh, were, were indicators. In retrospect, how long had you had symptoms, Senator? I think probably uh, it's hard to say, you know, because as I said, when you're running around the country and you're working hard, you're tired. Well, what else is no? You're going to be tired. Uh, I would say several weeks anyhow, and, and I should have paid more attention to that. So that clarification was incredibly important, but I'll be honest, I don't know that that's going to be enough to sufficiently quell fears that he's scaling back the campaign because he's deathly sick. I mean, he had a heart attack that was, that was serious, but like, he's doing okay. You saw him in the video. He looked good. His color in that video, to CNN's credit, was natural. It looked like the skin tone of a human being and not an alien. But, um, you know, we'll just have to see. It seems like his poll numbers were definitely affected by this negatively. Although today, you know, his poll numbers ticked up a little bit. So it's just too early to tell. All I know is that we have to go as Bernie Sanders supporters and put in extra hours work over time to make sure that we communicate to people that Bernie Sanders isn't going anywhere. Now, the problem is that, you know, sometimes once a narrative gets out there and it spreads, it's really difficult to change it. So we just have to do the best that we can. Now, on top of that, he assured us that he is in very good health. And, you know, you can see that, right? He assures us that he's in good health, but you can also see it. Like if someone was lying about their health, I think you'd be able to tell. And he also had a really important message about, you know, Looking at the warning signs when it comes to your health, if you feel as if you're fatigued, if you feel as if, you know, you're not in good health and maybe you're just not up to what you usually are when it comes to energy, go to the doctor. You know, don't wait until you end up having a heart attack. Don't wait until it is a medical emergency. Get checked out. See a doctor. But, you know, the thing about this is that's not necessarily realistic because people do know that they have health issues. They see the warning signs, but they can't go to a doctor because they don't have health insurance. Or maybe they do, but they can't afford the copay. Or, you know, they need a procedure, but they can't afford the money for, you know, the dedu deductible to meet that. So, you know, it's not so easy to just say, pay attention to the warning signs and uh, see a doctor. And the thing about Bernie Sanders is 
He gets this. He's not just saying that ignorantly, hey, go see a doctor if you need to. He acknowledges the reality in America that many people, they can't pay attention to the warning signs, or if they do, they can't do shit about it because we live in a system that is run by private insurance companies that just want to make money off of you, and they make money off of you by denying you care. So he put out a video on his YouTube channel where he kind of elaborated about how this heart attack got him thinking even more clearly about Medicare for All, and it kind of reignited that spark that he had, not that it ever went out, but it really made him, you know, it, it put everything into perspective, and he thought, what if I didn't have health insurance? How this could have turned out would have been completely different, and I want to share what he said, because I think it's really important, and it shows that even in times of crisis, he never stops thinking about normal Americans. Let me take this opportunity to thank people from all over the country uh, for their love, uh, their kind wishes, and I just can't tell you how much it has meant uh, to Jane and to me and to our whole family. Uh, and I also want to say that I am feeling great. Uh, I'm getting my endurance back, uh, and I look forward uh, to getting out on the campaign trail uh, as soon as possible. But let me relay to you just kind of an experience that I had lying in a hospital bed in Las Vegas after the heart attack. And I thought about a lot of things, needless to say, but one of the things that just went through my brain is what would have happened if I did not have uh, the good health insurance that I have. I have both Blue Cross and Blue Shield through my job in the Senate, and then I have Medicare as well. So what happens if somebody had no health insurance, who felt a pain in his or her chest, or felt really sick, and said to themselves, do I really want to go to the doctor or the hospital because I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to pay uh, for the medical bills that I'm going to incur. How many people are in that position? How many people have died because they don't get to the doctor or the hospital when they should? And it made me feel even more strongly the need for us to continue our efforts to end this dysfunctional and cruel health care system which leaves so many people uninsured, underinsured, causes bankruptcy, lowers credit scores for people who owe medical debt. It is an insane, wasteful, bureaucratic system based on the greed of the healthcare industry. So I got to tell you that even as I sat and lied down in that hospital bed in Las Vegas, this issue of the struggle that we are engaged in just, you know, permeated my mind. And I want all of you to understand that the day is going to come when 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you're going to be talking to your kids and you're going to be talking to your grandchildren and looking back and say, you know what, I was involved in that struggle that finally brought health care to all Americans as a human right. That's what we're trying to do. So be proud of the efforts that we're making. Understand the enormous opposition that we're facing from the drug companies and the insurance companies. But we are going to win this struggle. History is on our side. Function of health care is quality care for all, not billions in profits for the drug companies and the insurance companies. Look, I give Bernie Sanders credit. That is someone who is just genuinely a good person. He never stops thinking about others. He never stops thinking about people who are less fortunate, right? And he's imperfect. He's not, you know, the best politician perhaps ever. I don't agree with him 100% on every single thing. But you can tell, you know, what's evident to me about Bernie is that he has a good heart and he's genuinely trying to affect change in a positive way and to really use his heart attack to try to be an even stronger advocate for the less fortunate and push even harder for Medicare for All coming from a place of, you know, knowledge of what it's like to suffer, you know, a health crisis. It just, it shows me why we need to fight for him. And look, I'll say this, this could hurt him you know, long term, this heart attack, we have no idea. It's too early. But I'm not going to try to predict how this will affect his campaign. This is what I will say to you. If you want Bernie to be president, you fight for it. You don't just say, man, I hope that this doesn't affect him. You fight for Bernie Sanders. You fight for it. If you want something, you have to go and get it. Um, we see Elizabeth Warren overtaking Joe Biden in the polls, although he just overtook her again. But, you know, we see that they're neck and neck and Bernie Sanders is starting to fall. Don't just stand idly by while that happens. 
there is how many months until uh, Iowa? So it's almost uh, November. We're in mid-October. So what we have three months. That's a lot of time where things can change. And, you know, with every action comes a reaction. So if you fight for Bernie Sanders, that can actually have an effect. And we need more and more people to do that. So don't just worry about how this will affect him. Actively fight to make sure it doesn't hurt him. And not just that this doesn't hurt him. Like, we want him to excel. Make the electability argument that he can be Donald Trump. You know, um, we have to go out of our way more so than ever now to defend Bernie Sanders and get him elected. Because if we want something like, you know, student debt cancellation, medical debt cancellation, Medicare for all, he's the one candidate who's going to bring about that type of change. So if you want that, you've got to fight for it. And, you know, we're going to blame ourselves if... 30 years down the line, we don't get a President Bernie Sanders. We're going to look back to this moment and think, man, I really, really wish I fought harder. I wish I could have done more. So all I'm saying is don't kick yourself later. Use this moment and capitalize on it. Fight so that way, even if we lose, you know, you, you know you've assured yourself that you did everything you possibly could to get Bernie Sanders elected.